Yo, what's up guys? This is Foryam again, back with a new Minecraft Dungeons video. First off, I'd like to say a big thanks to every single one of you guys for joining the channel in the past days, of course, also liking my videos, being there at the premiere, leaving awesome comments to support the channel a little bit. Seriously, it is appreciated big time. I know I don't respond to all your comments, but at the same time, I get so many of them, but um, definitely know that I read every single one of them and I try to respond when I can. Anyways, right now we're going to talk about some big changes that have come along with the Flames of the Nether DLC on the 24th of February, which will impact the endgame greatly because right now we have so many more viable builds, so many awesome enchantments, weapons and armor to use. So right now you really want to know what should I play with for him. And that is exactly what we're going to talk about today. So right now we're going to cover all the new patch notes of 1.8.00, the update of the Flames of the Nether. So guys, let's get right to it. All right, so here we are on the official Minecraft website with the 1.8.00 patch notes of the Flames of the Nether DLC update, which of course got released on the 24th of February. If you want to check out all this information on your own, you should check out the link in the description. But right now we're going to dive deeper in all the info and check out which builds are going to be quite viable and interesting to work with, which items are going to be strong for the end game, pretty much the Apocalypse Plus, and of course all the things that got buffed and nerfed. So let's check it out. First off, Welcome to the Nether. This massive update brings new endgame content, enchantments, balance changes and a whole lot more. Also releasing is a brand new DLC that challenges heroes through the harsh landscapes of the Nether. You can also check out more information right here, but guys, right now we're gonna check out all the balance changes, all the buffs pretty much, which got into the game. All right, so for the free update, we first got our hands on the Ancient Hunts, and guys, seriously already made quite some videos for this, so if you haven't checked them out yet, check out the top right of the screen. I will uh, provide you with a link directly to these videos because um, they are pretty helpful. So uh, Ancient Hunts are procedurally generated endgame missions that weave in and out of the nether. You've probably already seen this on your own, but uh, seriously, they are very awesome awesome to play. I think probably the best new feature we got our hands on in Minecraft Dungeons because it makes the end game so much more fun and of course farming for those gilded items guys it is a great deal of fun. Um, then of course we also have the gold currency and the piglin merchant. Uh, once you get some gold in the ancient hunts you will be able to use that at the piglin merchant. He will sell you some gilded items so um, also be careful with spending these because it's pretty hard to get your hands on quite some gold and um, these items are very expensive. I think you should definitely save it for the higher apocalypse difficulty levels where you can get your hands on a tier 3 gilded enchantment armor or weapon and then also of course three enchantment slots on it. Next up we have some new enchantments and guys seriously these are very awesome. I'm gonna dive deeper into these tomorrow so I'm gonna cover every single enchantment which you can see right here um, tomorrow in that video. I'm gonna talk about which ones of them are very interesting to play, uh, some that aren't going to be interesting for your builds but uh, in general I think most of them are very cool to try out for some new viable builds on the end game on the highest Apocalypse Plus difficulty. And then we have 10 million heroes. And this means uh, Minecraft Dungeons sold the game 10 million times. So right now we have 10 mil players in the database, which is pretty cool. And that is also why we got our hands on a free cape. This is a sinister cape. And guys, seriously, go to the cosmetics tab right now. Equip it right off the bat because it looks very cool. You guys also know that I currently have my custom cape, my 4M cape. Uh, it's very noticeable. But um, at the same time, I think I'm going to make a new skin for my cape with a sinister cape. So if you are interested in me making a tutorial about how to make your very own cape, I can definitely do that. So just leave it in the comments down below. I'd love to make a guide for you guys. Then also return to checkpoint. I think this is a very awesome new feature as well. So right now when you press escape on PC or go to your menu on console, you will be able to get back to a previous checkpoint. So you can unstuck yourself pretty much because of course, sometimes you just fall out of the world. Uh, you get stuck at a certain point where you cannot even roll into the abyss. So yes, this is a very good new feature as well. Then also new achievements, 10 new achievements added to unlock on your adventures. Xbox Series X as enhanced. So right now this is also more interesting. Um, Flames of the Nether DLC, guys. Very awesome DLC, but at the same time, I still have to make my honest review about it because seriously, some things are really cool, but at the same time, some aren't fantastic. But um, I'm going to cover that in the coming days. So DLC features Journey in the Heart of the Nether with six new missions. So right now we get your hands on six instead of three. I think it's a very good thing to have. But at the same time, I was also disappointed at some of these levels but nevertheless guys it's a great deal of fun you get your hands on quite some new weapons armor and artifacts 
Then we also have some new weapons, guys. The Broken and Mechanized Saw Blade. Oh boy, these are very powerful to get your hands on. Yesterday I also made a video, check it out in the top right of the screen. This weapon is currently quite broken, as the name suggests right there. Uh, you should try it out definitely because it can glitch into some pretty crazy things. So then we also have the Bone Club, the Bone Cudgel, the Twisting Vine Bow, the Weeping Vine Bow, and the Cock Crossbow and the Pride of the Piglins. Also some new armor, the Sprout Armor and the Living Vines Armor. I think this is a very cool uh, set of armor that you can get your hands on because it has some pretty interesting enchantments. But um, we're gonna talk about that later as well as the Piglin and Golden Piglin Armor. Seriously, I always make showcase videos about the new uniques which you can get your hands on in every single DLC and that is exactly what I'm gonna do in the coming days but um, I'm just extremely busy so um, busy I just said busy but um they are on the way. So I'm gonna cover all the uniques, don't worry about that. I'm gonna talk about the best ones out there. So uh, that is also gonna be quite interesting. And then also the new artifacts, which I already covered in a previous video, the Blast Fungus, the Power Shaker, the Spin Blade, and the Thundering Quiver. But then, guys, this is very interesting. We also get our hands on some balance changes, some nerfs and buffs in the game. First off, I think this one isn't very nice. Uh, Arc Haven and Soggy Cave. The unlock locations of these secret missions now always appear on Pumpkin Pastures and Soggy Swamp. So that pretty much means right now you don't have to search anymore for the secret levels. They will just be given to you. It's just a free secret level. And I think that definitely breaks the fun of farming for those uh, secret levels because, of course, uh, right now you can get your hands on it right off the bat. But, um, of course, it will also be nicer for people who don't have a lot of time to play the game. So they will instantly get their hands on the secret level. It will be nice, though, for my hardcore survival series, which I'm definitely going to start making again when I get more time. But, um, yes, there's that. We also have the Apocalypse Plus, which got tweaked big time. So, first off, we have the previous 20 Apocalypse Plus levels have been compressed into 10. So, right now, your level is pretty much reset. But at the same time, I think it's really good because we get more endgame value. Imagine they didn't rework this and we actually started right at the very highest Apocalypse Plus difficulty. Then, of course, first of all, your gear would be way underpowered because they also retreat the power levels which is currently like 240 250 i don't see it in um, the description right here but um i think it's a really cool thing because we all have a lot more replayability a lot more replay value in the game 15 additional Apocalypse Plus levels have been added, bringing a total to 25. Then also each Apocalypse Plus level now increases gear power and mob stats more than previously. So like I just said, 250 to 60 max, I think. With daily trials, you can even go higher. So right now it feels more balanced. It doesn't go super difficult in a very short time. Every third Apocalypse Plus level now requires completing one of the multiple bosses. I already made a pretty cheesy video for this, so you'll be able to get your hands on the maximum Apocalypse Plus difficulty very fast. So also check it out if you haven't already it's in the top right of the screen and um, of course I definitely suggest you guys to just play the game on uh, the regular don't search for glitches don't search for bugs it's just that um, you guys love me posting videos like these so um, yes I am here to provide I always try to share the things that are pretty cheesy if you are having some difficulties with those there is no longer a small chance for mobs to respawn while playing on the higher apocalypse plus levels I think many of you guys are happy about this because um, many people were complaining like oh my god i just killed this creeper like 10 times it just keeps respawning and it is simply not fun so they just simply removed the feature which is in my opinion not very nice because i did like the extra challenge and randomness but of course the majority of the community didn't find this very funny also drastically lowered the frequency of tier 2 and 3 variants of mobs such as armored zombies and illagers so that means on the higher apocalypse difficulties there's going to be a bigger variety of mobs so not only those very tanky strong ones I think that is also very nice. Then also a very nice nerf right here, guys. Mob enchantments, electrified. Interval from five to four. So in the past, I already talked about this. When you want to beat those mobs with electrified, all you have to do is wait for the zzz, and right after that, you will be able to take them down pretty easily in a time window of five seconds. Right now, they nerfed it to four, so that means you're gonna have to be a little bit more careful, but at the same time, the electrified damage got reduced from 150 to 90. So yes, the electrified is definitely a little bit less scary right now. And this also means that electrified damage per second has gone from 30 to 22.5. So yes, of course, less damage. Then the blacksmith. Each Apocalypse Plus threshold is now also a threshold for upgrading items 
at the blacksmith. So say you're currently on Apocalypse level 7 plus 18, you're using the blacksmith to upgrade your gear. Of course, this will also be according to your difficulty level. If you unlock higher difficulty levels, you also play those levels. So you, of course, have to do them instead of playing a lower Apocalypse Plus, then you will be able to upgrade them to the levels according to the difficulty. So that means, for example, if you already unlocked Apocalypse level 7 plus 25 and you think like, I'm going to upgrade all my gear to that level, you just play Apocalypse level 7 plus 2, for example. That is no longer going to work, my friend, but um, nice try. Then also enchantment slots. Bosses in Apocalypse are now more likely to drop triple enchantment items. I think it's really good because uh, sometimes you just find one or two enchantment slot item it is really annoying and then the items drop now become more guaranteed to have three enchantment slots partway through apocalypse plus so the higher your difficulty is of course also the higher the chances are of finding three enchantment slot items so that is also really awesome and then we also have the artifact cooldown effects and guys seriously we currently have a huge change to artifact cooldown reduction in my opinion it's a very good one so let's check it out right here so cooldown decrease from armor buffs from 30 to 40 percent so the built-in cooldown reduction enchantments is even stronger so that is already very nice then also the decrease from a single enchantment slot buff from uh, more or less 30 to 40 percent as well so that means every time when you get your hands on a cooldown reduction enchantment it is also going to be very powerful but then there is also a catch so um the stacked cooldown decrease from multiple sources on different times will now have diminishing effects so uh, example using evocation robes and three maxed out enchantments uh, with cooldown reduction the cooldown change would go from an 87 percent decrease to 77 percent so that means stacking up artifact cooldown reduction will be less interesting. So they're trying to counter this. They're trying to pretty much get rid of the fact that you really want to get your hands on as many cooldown reduction enchantments as possible to encourage pretty much using also other enchantments. And I think that is a very good thing because uh, in the past we were just building some speed ring items and getting our hands on as many cooldown reduction enchantments as possible. But right now they're really saying that we should focus on using other enchantments as well. So they're actually giving us a gift of boosting the artifact cooldown reduction, but reducing the power of it when you just stack them up. So I think that's a very good thing. Overall, this is a buff to most cooldown combinations, entirely correct, and a slight nerf to cooldown builds that use cooldown armor with two or more enchantment slots. So I think it's a very good thing. Mojang, seriously, well played right there. Very good counter and interesting things in return as well. Then Ravagers. Charge attack damage from 350 to 175. Guys, these were seriously scary on the higher apocalypse difficulties. They were able to one-hit kill you pretty much, but right now uh, it sounds a lot less scary. And I think that's a very good thing as well, because uh, man, oh man, sometimes they had like the quick attack, uh, double damage, uh, protection, and they were super scary, but right now this all got fixed. Rampart Captain, also damage reduction from 450 to 300. These are the guys with the, the banners on their back, which you can see on um, the ramparts on the uh, Howling Peaks. Then also the wind collar updraft damage from 110 to 80. I think they didn't have to do this because the wind collars weren't that powerful. The knockback is pretty annoying, but at the same time, the updraft damage wasn't very strong. So um, I think they shouldn't have done this. Maybe next update, you're going to rebalance it. But then also the wolf, guys. This is a very interesting buff right here. The health from 100 to 200. So their HP cut doubled. And also the damage from 85 to 100. So they're definitely trying to motivate us to use pet a little bit more often uh, they also made a great deal of pet enchantments to enhance them pretty much to make them more powerful when you use your artifacts where you use potions etc etc more about that in um, my video which i'm going to make tomorrow about all the new enchantments the mace third attack the area damage from 225 to 250 so a slight buff as well then the third attack damage from 90 to 140 so yes blunt weapons are going to be a lot more powerful as well right now so i think it's definitely going to be interesting to uh, check out the um, gravity hammer i think and also the the storm collar um many more of those are going to be really cool to play with right now then also the katana attack speed increased by 
30%. So yes, the katana is going to be a lot cooler. I think the dark katana is also going to be pretty fancy to play with right now. So all the things that weren't played with really in the past are going to be viable right now. Also the dagger, range increased from 330 to 350. On paper, this sounds like a very small change, but you will feel it very quickly, guys. Seriously, the daggers, the moon daggers are going to be pretty interesting to play with. So um, also definitely worth checking out. The rapier, damage increased from 11 to 13 and 60 to 70 for the final attack. So that means also the rapiers um, and also the beast thing are, are a lot more interesting. I think this is actually a reskin of the saw blades, the both broken and the mechanized saw blade. They work exactly the same, but of course they also have this overheat effect. And of course at the very end, they don't have this very high hitting uh, final attack. And then also the soul scythe the damage got buffed a little bit as well as a splash factor. Hunting bow, power bow, trick bow, wind bow, all these bows also got buffed. They weren't used really frequently in uh, in the past, but right now you can tell that uh, there are many interesting changes. Uh, on the hunting bow, we have an increased quiver size, so that means every time when you start a level, you will have 50% uh, more arrows, and um, the charge shot damage will go to 2 instead of 2.5. So it is a slight nerf, but uh, the hunting bow is already pretty powerful, and the hunting bow is also a bow which you can use um, to buff your attacks uh, of pets and also uh, focus on certain targets with pets. Um, then also the power bow damage increased by 33% and this is also where I made my one hit kill guide for taking down apocalypse plus mobs, bosses, and of course also the bosses on the Asian hunts. If you haven't checked it out yet, guys, seriously, it's in the top right of the screen. It's a very powerful build which you can build with uh, the power bow. So um, yes, very interesting. Then also the trick bow, damage increased by 20%, projectile speed increased by 20%. I think this is also pretty cool because it already shoots multiple arrows sometimes depending on the enchantments. But uh, then last but not least also the wind bow increased quiver size by 20%. Not a very big buff, but um, nevertheless, it's also pretty significant. And then we also got our hands on some fixes. Most of these are going to be very small, or maybe you won't even notice them. But um, if you want to check out every single one of them, make sure to check out the description because the link is right there. But um, let's cover some of the most important ones. So fixed an issue when attempting to delete a character on create new character would delete a random character. I haven't encountered this one yet, but uh, it definitely sounds extremely scary. Very good thing that they fixed this. Also fixed the threat slider, moving back to the recommended threat level as soon as a new mission is started. So I think this is also very nice because um, this one was actually annoying me in particular like big time. Fix the explosion effect appearing underground for Martineer and Rampart Captain and then all the other things right here aren't as interesting. And then we also have some node issues and guys seriously these are really awesome because um, you can actually get many gilded items with the first one. Look at this one. In rare cases multiple ancient mobs may spawn at once. Some of you guys already shared some screenshots on the Discord. By the way, if you are not yet on the Discord, you should check it out. We are currently more than 2,300 members big and it just keeps growing every single day. Uh, we're trading items with each other, uh, grouping up. We have many voice chat uh, channels right there where you can team up with people. Of course, also talk about different builds. Uh, we also talk about the regular Minecraft, about Valheim. So you should check out the Discord. But um, seriously, in rare cases, having three of those ancient mobs spawn at once also means that you can get your hands on three gilded items in one single room so that is very awesome in my opinion but they are working on this it's a known issue so they're gonna try to fix this one as quick as possible completing missions in multiplayer as a client who does not have the level locked can feel to count towards the apocalypse plus unlock progress so yes I always suggest you guys to just solo those. They are really great fun. But of course, also playing with friends can be fun as well. Um, if you want to get your hands on the highest Apocalypse Plus difficulty in a pretty cheesy way, once again, top right of the screen, there is a very good guide for you guys right there. Rarely rolling off the map in certain areas in Warped Forest may cause the player to respawn at the beginning of an ancient hunt. So guys, this also sounds extremely powerful. Um, I haven't checked this one out yet or I haven't encountered this bug yet. But seriously, if you can actually go to a warped forest, uh, accidentally fall off the map and begin an ancient hunt. That sounds very awesome. You don't have to sacrifice anything. So uh, maybe this is definitely worth trying in a future stream before it gets fixed. So uh, we should really do that. The objective marker can fail to guide players through the nether fortress mission. Guys, seriously, I had really big frustration with this one because it was always showing me the wrong way. The GPS was bugging out 24-7. I really didn't like this one and I was actually going to complain 
complain about it in my Honest Flames of the Nether DLC review. But um, looks like they know it already, they're gonna fix it ASAP, so I'm gonna just leave it out of the video, but... Um, if you were interested in a uh, honest review about the Flames of the Nether DLC, that one is also on my planning, but um, it's going to be something for the coming days. Environmental fire in the Nether missions do not damage players or mobs. I actually had a great deal of damage dealt to me while I was walking through the lava. There was also a secret golden chest which you can get your hands on. Well, it's not really secret, but um, it looks like unreachable, but um, it's actually reachable if you just walk through the lava, and I definitely did get damage right there. Also, the pain cycle gilded enchantment description does not mention the health cost mechanic. So guys, make sure to check out um, this one on the regular items, regular enchantments. Um, the pain cycle will deal damage and actually a great deal of it, especially if you're playing with a two-handed weapon. So uh, be careful with that as well. So yeah, there we have it. Pretty much all the information on the Flames of the Nether DLC update 1.8.00 patch. If you enjoyed watching this video, it would be very much appreciated to just hit that like button for a second. Of course, also leave your thoughts in the comments down below about these changes. Most of them actually got buffed. So I think it's a very good thing that we see all these things popping up. We get our hands on so many more interesting enchantments, which I'm going to cover tomorrow, by the way. Don't forget that. We also got our hands on many buffs on different weapons. For example, the dagger, the katana, all these bows. So you should try them out right now. I think they can be pretty viable also for pet builds because pets are a thing uh, in builds right now. Um, they used to be extremely weak, but right now you can get your hands on some very interesting enchantments for that. So it's definitely worth trying. Trying. Also, maybe even for the higher apocalypse difficulties. Anyways, I'm working on guides. I'm working on builds. I just need to get my hands on the perfect items for those. But um, I will also post those in the coming days. Anyways, right now it is 4 a.m. out of time to work on a new video. Yes, guys, I'm seriously on fire right now. But um, I am just very excited about all these changes being added to uh, the game. All these additions, pretty much. All these new weapons and armor and artifacts which I can showcase um, yes, the Flames of the Nether DLC update is a good thing. Very happy about this. Mojang, once again, thanks for um, showing that you really care about your community. There are definitely some things that are still uh, waiting for improvement, crying for improvement, but um, this is already a very big step forward. Guys, right now I'm gonna shut down the camera. It's time to work on my live stream, so um, I'll see you guys very soon. And my dog also just wanted to say a big thanks for all the awesome support on the channel, guys. So seriously, Fedecha approves. So uh, guys, I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Ooh.